So good morning. Good morning, good morning. It's a beautiful Thursday uh, morning. So we should begin now our class. So today I'll be tackling more on market sentiment. So as we await, the rest will be joining us later. So let me get my let me get my notes ready for today's class. So I'll be touching on market sentiment. It's more of sentiment analysis. We have done a lot of technical, we have a lot of, done a lot of fundamentals. So now it's time to dive to the deep end to know what really happens to the market. And we call this market sentiment. So let me get the notes ready because this will be quite an interesting class. So one minute, so it is a professional, where are those notes? So, uh, just one minute. I get my notes ready. So last class we did fundamental analysis, I remember. So we have touched a lot of technical price action. We have done a lot of indicators. So I think we might have maybe one or more class ready, then we should be done. So, and I think I've sent a lot of material in the WhatsApp group. So this has been one of the most productive classes I've had. So thank you guys for always uh, showing up and always at least uh, being ready. So uh, the class doesn't end. So even as we continue, the idea is we want you to build a profitable trading strategy. So the moment you build a profitable trading strategy, you're good to go. So let me get a new window. So one minute, because we won't take much time, maybe 20, 30 minutes. But it will be a very, very important class. Oh, I have my notes ready. Uh, okay. So, so here they are. So I have my notes ready. Let me share my screen so that we get started. So where are they? Uh, they are here. Okay, so I'm sharing my screen. So today we'll be doing more or less what I do every day. So it's an interesting, interesting, interesting market. So I've opened one page here, Yahoo Finance. Uh, I also have a port, we also have our own portal, but this one is for people who are trading live. We have advanced courses. This was more of introduction and basics. So we have more of advanced where you sign up to our portal uh, when you're online. So, but that one I'll be explaining later. So for today, I want to be touching, I just want to touch on market sentiment. So let me use baby pips, then I'll show you how to interpret the market. Interpreting the market is easy. So uh, it's, it's, but it takes a lot of skill because uh, from 2008, 2009, markets have been different. How have they been different? They have, there was a crash that happened and that crash changed everything in 2008, 2009. So market became, very, very volatile. A lot of volatility was unlocked, especially last year. So last year COVID hit, that was our big, big bear. So you have to understand this market works in form of every action. For every action, there's a reaction. So you don't just trade plainly. So that's what I want to show you now. So give me a minute. Uh, having too many ads here. So I'm going to market sentiment. We call it sentiment analysis. I usually do this class once. So it's good you pay attention. Uh, even last year, I think I only did it once. But now the thing is this class changes depending with the events of what's happening in the market. So let me just do a little theory then we do practical on what market sentiment is. So, so now I want to touch fundamental economic data. No, no, no. All this we have, we are done. Fake out, breakouts. I think by now you're able to get in and out. Fundamental analysis, economic events is basically what is moving the markets. I have a manual. I have so much material. I shared also yesterday. Uh, I think I shared a, a, a picture, JPEG on economic indicators, crosses. So I want to touch on all this. So this is more of technical and fundamental. So I'll be touching on this now, market sentiment. Because now once you understand market sentiment, you'll be able to understand not just trading the news, but you'll be able to know 
what really moves the market. I'll also touch on COT, Commitment of Traders Report, to be able to understand where usually do these guys placing their position. We have market players, big market players, institutional players, and the rest. So let's get started immediately because of time. So yeah, yeah, we are on now. So pay a lot of attention because I won't be using much charts. It's more of numbers. Numbers or basically the feel. So what is market sentiment? Market sentiment is how Mr. Market is feeling. You know, markets have value. Scarcity gives the market value. When you, when you don't have money, you broke, that means that currency has value because we have to use it as a means of exchange. So now we need to just feel how things are feeling. Or every time you need to feel how the market is behaving. So every Forex trader will have an opinion about the market. Is it a bear market? Everything is going to hell. Of course, some people are always bearish, others are always bullish. But for me, I just understand market sentiment depending with how things are. So things are looking bright and pretty bullish on the markets. So you can see our bear and our bull there trying to understand. So these are always two people who are always fighting, bears and bulls. Bears are pushing prices down, bulls are always pushing prices up. So each and every trader will have their own personal explanation as to where the market is moving in a certain way. So when trade, trading, traders express this view in whatever position they take. So if you're a bear, of course, they're usually selling, you're bullish, you're usually buying. So, but sometimes no matter how convinced a trader is that the markets will move in a particular direction, no matter how pretty the trend lines and all the technical analyses are good, sometimes the trader will end up losing. Actually, 95% are usually losing. So that's what I want to touch on. Why are they losing? Because they don't understand something we call market sentiment. It's not whether the market is bullish or bearish or neutral. It's just how is the market feeling? Every time you get into trading, you need to understand how is the market feeling? How is the day? If you're a day trader, if you're a scalper, you need to understand how is your day like? Like uh, Monday, Monday when I got into the office, it was pretty bearish. It was pretty red, very big red. SNMP was down 10%. So why? I had to go and analyze why did the market become that low? When it's bullish, why? When demand is high, why? When supply chains are low, why? So this is my why. So today I'm giving you my why on market sentiment so that you can be able to apply it in your trading. So a Forex trader must realize the overall, the overall market is a combination of all the views, ideas, and opinions of all the market participants. So I'll also be introducing you to market participants, those ones who are really moving big in the market. So that's right, everyone. So that combined feeling of all the market participants is what now we are calling market sentiment. So all everyone, bullish, bearish, whatever position you're taking is what now we are calling market sentiment. It is the demoting emotion or I mean, it is the dominating emotion or idea that the majority of the market feels best explains the current direction of the market. So at the end of the day, one has to win and sometimes you're usually neutral. Neutral means we're not going up or down. So I'm going to show you one chart, which is neutral, and we are going to see why, uh, how to develop a market sentiment-based approach. So how do you develop a market sentiment-based approach? So as a trader, your job is to gauge how the market is feeling. When I pull out this chart, the way it is, this is uh, pound USD. I need to feel, I need by just checking without even taking any trade, whether I'm on D1 or H4 or whichever position I am in, I need to understand how is the market feeling, even on weekly, but mostly I use D1. D1 is usually most of one of my most, most best, best uh, time frame to be able to understand the market sentiment. Why? I'm looking at every 30 days between this line to this line, between this line to this line. So let me put this down here because I'll be doing a lot of explanation using this chart. So between now and the end of the month, you just look, today's 23rd, maybe you have some few days before the end of the month. So up to here will be the end of the month. This should be 30th. Is it 30th or first? Yeah, this should be 01, 10th, 2021, the beginning of October. So between now and before the 1st of October, I need to know how is the market feeling? Are we bullish or are we bearish and why? Let's keep going. So are traders bearish on the economy? So uh, basically, as a forex trader, it's your job to gauge how it's feeling at the indicators. So all your indicators, that includes technical, fundamental, and everything. What are they pointing towards? 
on long term basis because now we are not doing short term we are really looking at between now probably and the next quarter the next quarter is october november and december we need just to know between now and before the end of december or before the end of the year how is the market feeling are people feeling bearish or bullish we can't tell the market what we think it should do but what we can do is react in response to what is happening so it's very very hard number one to predict the future because we are usually in the business of prediction so all we do is have probabilities and respond to what the market is doing so note that using the market sentiment approach doesn't give precise entry and exit for each trade but don't despair so let's see having a sentiment a sentiment based approach can help you decide whether you should go with the flow or not so this is very 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 important of course you can always combine uh, market sentiment analysis with technical and fundamental analysis to come up with trade ideas so we still have our technical and fundamental but this time we are using something called sentiment based approach sentiment based approach means we need to feel how is everyone feeling all bulls and all bears how, how is everyone deciding are they feeling like selling or buying so in stocks and option traders can look at volume traded as an indicator so we also have volume this is usually very very important i think you have seen it mostly in my classes let me just show you so so i'll have to put you guys here or on the side uh, so let's be here okay so this volume this is what i was talking about you've seen me mostly uh it's a bit advanced it's how the banks trade greens and whites so that one i'll explain later but for now let's first finish on our theory so that because this theory is important because i'll be also touching on something we call cot or commitment of traders report if a stock price has been rising but volume is declining it may signal that the market is overbought so of a, or if a declining stock suddenly reverses on high volume it means the market sentiment have changed so what happens with sentiment every big bull turns to a bear or every big bear has has to turn to a big bull and that's exactly what pound has been doing you can see this was a bear then it went down then it went down again it created a lower low you can see this was a low then it created a lower low then it got to the point whereby or it went to the last then it started going up then went down then went up then went down so most likely we are looking at a sentiment based approach because of this pattern you can see there's a pattern forming here and then you also look at the overbought and oversold prices so you can see we are really oversold on the on the cable so most likely we might be looking at a bullish kind of sentiment approach but let's see you also need to know the factors so unfortunately since forex market is traded over the counter it doesn't have central but this month that the volume of each currency traded cannot be easily measured so it's hard to be able to measure so that's why we'll introduce to you something called the commitment of traders report this is very 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 important so let's have a look because this now is able to help me gauge my sentiment i'm able to know everyone what position they are taking and where they are so let's learn about the report it's called the, it's, it's usually the commodity futures publishes the community the community commodity futures trading commission this is the commission that usually regulates the commodities usually publishes the commitment of traders report every friday at around 230 pm so i'll also be checking on that pound using my cot to see if my sentiment is correct or not because the cot measures the net long so we are looking at the net long net long are those guys go, going bullish and then and short positions are those guys going bearish taken by speculative traders and commercial traders it is a great resource to gauge how heavily these market players are positioned in the market so we just it's basically need to know where they are so we'll meet these players we have the hedgers we have large speculators those are institutionals and banks and now we have us as here we are the retail traders so just like players in a team sport each group have is, has its unique characteristics and roles so by watching the behavior of these players you'll be able to foresee incoming changes in the market sentiment so probably thinking what the heck do i use the data from so doesn't the spot market have a report to measure how currency traders are positioned so we are looking at everyone every player in the game or every player in this market and the position they are taking or if they have not taken any position what they are doing so are we so remember the spot forex is traded over the counter transaction do not pass through a centralized exchange like the chicago mercantile 
exchange. So let's go to the commitment of traders report from the futures market so that we are able to gauge our sentiment. So where do we find it? So let's go directly to where we find it. And then I'll be able to show you how you read it. Then we are going to check our positions depending with our report. So today I'll just be on this report. So here is where we find it. So I'll click on the link. And then now I'll be able to show you how you read it, how you understand it. So let me, before I go to the link, let's finish on the theory. So once the page has loaded, scroll from the couple of pages on the currency legacy report and click on the short format. So you can see, I'm going to click on the short format under the futures only on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange to how to access the most recent, recent report. So let's open it. So futures, so we are going to go to futures only because we are trying to look at the future. Then we are going to look at the short format. I think our internet, uh, it's good. So up, after we do that, now we will look at, oh yeah, it's open. So now we'll go to the futures, where are the futures? Uh, so just a minute. I need you, I need this here so that we can be able to read this report. So commodity futures trading commission. So here it is. So now we'll go to read. Yeah, so here we are. So you can see we have long format. We have short format. So this is disagre disaggregated futures only. So you can see we have agriculture, petroleum, natural products, electricity, metals, and other. So we only need futures only. We also have financials, you can see, we are here. So this is what we are looking at, futures only. Let's go back to our notes. So we are looking at Chicago Mercantile Exchange short format. So here we are, Chicago Mercantile short format. So we are here. So I think it's open. There we are. So once we open that, step three, it may seem a little intimidating at first, but looks like a big giant go back. So you just pr press control F. I hope you're doing it where you are because this is very, very important. So just click on uh, this, this link. Let me put the link on our chat so that everyone is with me. So, so there is the link. So click on the link so that we are together. Then from there, you'll click short format. Once you click on that link, or I've just given you the direct link, but we are looking at short format. We need to look at the futures of pound and all these other currencies. So it will look like this. So you can see we have long, short, spread, long, short, long, short, long, short. We have non-commercial, commercial, and non-reportable positions. So commercial, these are big businesses that use currency futures to hedge and protect themselves from too much exchange rate fluctuation. We have a lot of swaps, inflation, and all that. These are commercial. And commercial, this is a mixture of individual traders, hedge funds, and financial institutions. Okay, welcome, Nelly. For the most part, these are traders looking to trade for speculative gains. In other words, these are traders just like you and I. So they're the Benjamins. They're looking to make some good money out there. We have long. That's the number of long contracts, short, the number of short contracts. Then we have, this is the very, very important column I want us to check, open interest. This column represents the number of contracts out there that have not been exercised or delivered. These are people just holding, they're neither buying nor selling. So the larger this number is, of course we have speculative that move, markets can move in any direction, down or up. The number of traders, this is the total number of traders who are required to report, to report positions to the CFTC. Reportable position, number of options and futures positions required. So I think that is, so how do we understand it? So let's see how we understand it. Then now we are going to read it and check with our chart on cable. I'll just show you on cable, but you can use it with all other instruments. So in order to understand first, you need to know people making the shots and those who are warming each other. So here they are, commercial traders, the hedgers. These are the big guys, large speculators, they're the banks. So these are more of traders and hedge funds. These are more of the banks and also small speculators. Now it's the retail traders. So don't ignore the commercial traders. So these are the guys I'm usually really interested because then they are going long term. They, they want to go a year. So a key characteristics of hedges is that they are most, they are most like they are most bullish at market bottoms and most bearish at market tops. 
So if I check my chart on weekly, so these are the guys who buy down here or sell up there. So let's zoom it out. Yeah, I want you to see this was since 2017. So they sell from up here or they buy from down here because then they have a lot of money. They are not interested with quick, quick return. They just want a good return by the end of the year. So that's those are the commercials. They are very, very, very important. So most of the time they're usually bullish uh, at the bottom or bearish at the top. So let's continue. So I think we can go read it because now there isn't much here. Okay, so let's go to the, how do you use it for trading? Then now we read it. So give me just like two minutes. So how do you use the report? Since your report comes out weekly, so it comes out weekly, it's usefulness every Friday, I think 2.30. It's, it's usefulness as a market sentiment indicator would be more suitable for long-term trades. So the question may be asking is, how the heck do you turn all that big giant block text into a sentiment-based indicator that will help you grab some pips? One way to use the COT report in your trading is to find extreme net long or net short positions. We need to look at extreme net long or net short. Finding this position may signal that a market reversal is just around the corner because if everyone is long on a currency, who is left to buy? No one else is left. They will be most likely selling. So, and if everyone is short, who is left to sell? So if everyone else also is selling big time, no one else is left to sell. So most likely it will be a big reversal. Yeah, anyway, that's right. So let's look at this chart. This was Euro USD. You see everyone was long. So no one else here will be left to buy again. So the market should be looking at, at a reversal. That's why there was a sell there. Look here, everyone here was short. So when everyone is short for a very long time, no one else is left to sell. The market will go up, then down. And they it seemed there was a divergence here. So, so on the top path, we've got the price action on Euro USD. At the same time, the bottom, we've got the data on the long position on Euro futures. So this is an example of how we read the report. So pay attention. Let's look at what happened. This was between 208, midway through 208. As you can see, Euro USD made a steady decline from July to September. So you can see this is long term. So as the value of net, net po short position of non-commercial, the green line dropped, so did Euro USD. At the middle of September, net short position hit extreme 45, 640. So this one I'm going to go read with you. So how do you pick tops and bottoms? So the idea with the COT, we need to get the big reversals happening. So how do you pick them? Let's have a look. Then now we read it. So. Well, I just buy when the market is bottoming, speculators sell as the price moves down. So this is the difference we need to understand. Hedgers are buying when the market is bottoming and speculators, what are they doing? They are selling when the price moves down. A speculator sell as the price moves down. So as a result, speculative positioning indicates trend direction while commercial position could signal reversal. So commercial is very, very important. So the basic rule is every market top or bottom is accompanied by a sentiment extreme, but not every sentiment extreme results into a market, market top or bottom. So let's go to the CFT now. Let's read it. So here we are. So you can look at the date when is today. This was 14.09. So let's look at the date. Then we read our report. This, so this was on Tuesday. Yeah, last week, Tuesday is when this report was released. So we'll wait now for next week to get now this week's report. So maybe we can look at it from Tuesday or Wednesday. So, but for last week was on Tuesday. So this was Conan Commercial. So this is futures only. So this is, you can see USD, Malaysian crude palm oil. So butter, so I need the currencies. So let's look for the currencies. You can see even milk. These are all the futures, milk, coffee, everything is usually here. So where is the futures? Uh, so just a minute, let me look for the currencies. Russian, or you can see this is the Russian rubble. That's the Russian currency, Canadian dollar. The currencies are here. So I'll be on the on the cable because I really love trading the cable. Swiss franc, you can see it's here. So let's look at Mexican peso. Yeah, it's here. British pound sterling. So let me show you how you read now the report. So I hope you're with me. So this is now how you read the report. This is our pound futures. First of all, we look at non-commercial. We say this is more of commercial, they're hedgers, these are institutions. So we look at how many people are long. 
So you can see long, short contracts. So you can see long, there are many, 44,161. Short, there are 39,371. These are the non-commercial. So these are more of speculators. Changes from 090721, change in open interest. So we can see there was change in open interest, percent of open interest for each category. So this open interest, we have 31. So guys who are looking long open interest, this one at 27.6, then the spreads become around 0 0.7. Commercial now, you look at how many are long. You can see commercial now, this is interesting, 65,679. But you see short, so they are looking to short a lot, 78,700. 66 change in open interest you can see minus 33 and this is minus so it seems like the change of any int uh, open interest here is higher because you can see we are at minus 67 then total long 110 so and then short 118 so there seems to be a balance because but the shorts are more than non-reportable positions 32,000 and these ones are 24,000 so you can see this also open interest 2,000 so here there's something interesting because you can see here we have 2,478 and here we have minus 1,000. Uh, so we have more people who are interested in long positions on the open interest. I told you, you have to really, really, really check on open interest because these are the guys who have taken long and short position. So percentage of open interest for each category of traders here 31, 27. So here there are more, here we have 46, 51. So commercial seems they are, they are shorting more on, on the pound. So look at also these ones along uh, their 77, 83. So total, it seems the shorts are more. Then long, we have 22, 17. But now the only challenge now with cable. So that's why this may signal a big reversal because you can see we have a lot of open interest here because you can see non reportable positions, they are around. 22.9. So the number of traders, these ones are 26, 22, 9, then these ones are 32, 40. So there seems to be a balance, 62, 67. So let's go now to our cable. On uh, Now we'll have to look on four hours. So yeah, you can see. So that's our cable on four hour. Uh, then I zoom out a little bit. So you can see it's at the lowest point because you can see this is, this is a strong support. So technically you can see, that's why I was saying most likely we are looking at a big reversal because there's a lot of number of open interests who have interest in longs here. You can see here, this long. This is, this is what I wanted you to look at. So when you're reading this, this uh, COT report, open interest is the number of people who have interest. They have not taken any position. These ones have already taken their positions. They are long and short. You can see non-commercial, of course, they are long. And then commercial, these are the hedgers. So hedgers, why are they short? They have money. They have like a billion, 10 billion. But why are they shorting? It's because they have to hedge against risks, against inflation, against all these uh, fees. Uh, currency valuations and the rest. So that's why you're seeing here they are short and you see there are many, 78,756. Then open interest, yeah, they are 55.2 and around 40 here. So this is very, very important to know. Then, but now the non-reportable and non-commercial, the longs are more because you can see 44,139,000. So the idea is for us to be able to understand COT, it, sometimes you are able to know where the reversals are happening. So when I look at COT, then I go back to my graph, especially on a longer time frame, because now these ones are usually not going short term. As I told you, COT mostly we are gauging sentiment. So I also need to know you to know, I have a moving average, we used it, it's called 200. It's also usually important able to gauge our sentiment. So apart from the COT, so that's my graph. So at least you can see that's my graph on, on cable, GBP USD daily. There's another site I need to show you where we read the COT. It's called Timing Charts. So I hope it's on. Yeah, it's here. So this one is also able to read the same, same COT, but different. So let's get in and have a look at it. Then I show you how you read it. So this mostly is looking at net long, net, net short positions, the open, the COT data. So the COT data should help you be able to come up with a market sentiment approach whereby you're able to know are you long or short 
on whichever currency pair or whichever futures. So when I've been able to, to help you understand commercials are hedging, non-commercials are speculators, those ones they are buying or selling. So now I'll be showing you those three category of people with lines. We have, I think, a green line. So just a minute, this one opens. So whatever I've just shown you now, you'll see it here. So I'll go to pound again. So British pound futures, here they are. And you can, so I, I'm just going for the whole pound because now my major is pound USD because we have cable and then let me use a mountain. So it looks like that. So then I'll click on COT. So you can see here it is COT, commitment of traders. So when I click on it, so just a minute. So this should be, yes, there it is. So these are the hedges, the blue line. And you can see the positions also here, plus open interest. Then the red line are the retail traders, and then non-commercial and the speculators are the green line. So, and this should be at least within the last, uh, so we can, this is the last three months, six months, Let's do three months. Yes, at least the last three months. So you can see pound has been falling. Because why? The, spec the commercial were, are, are net short, but the speculators are net long. The reason why they are net long is because this green line has not crossed the red line. The red line are the retail traders here. Hope you can see the retail traders, everyone here. Everyone who has an account and is a retail trader all over the world is represented by the red line. Then the speculators, most likely you will hear them by the name market makers. They like, you know, they create volatility. When you buy, they sell. When they sell, you buy. They are represented by this green line. Then now the hedgers, the hedgers now have a lot of money. It's like the hedge funds, a billion, 10 billion, 100 billion. They are represented by the blue line. So the most important thing to look is the green line. Anytime it's crossing the red line, we are mostly falling on a long term. So this is three months, let's go to six months. So you can see it's still somehow far above the, the red line. Then we go to maybe a year. I'm still, let's just wait the chart to load. So yeah, so you can see pretty above, it's still, still above. So I don't think, and pound has been really gaining at least for the last one year. You can see it's been really, the graph has been really, really going up. Then I can even go three years, uh, but I won't go more than three years. So you can see three years. I think, think this was the dip on when? When was this? Oh, this was Corona. So this was the Corona that made uh, this big dip. Then now the market started regaining. Plus Brexit and also UK left the EU. Uh, what else were they facing? I think that was the major. Apart from Corona, Corona is for the whole world. So, but for the UK, mostly they were leaving the EU. They did do that. They did a good transition. That's why the cable has been gaining very, very much. So let's go back to six months. So at least for COT, so most likely now I'm seeing that reversal might happen with my COT data because these speculators don't seem to have any interests or any open interests. So let's look at their open interest on the speculators before we call it a day. So these ones, non-commercial. What's their open interest? So long, they are 44, short, they are 39. And then what's their open interest? Uh, a minute, uh, traders, they are 22. So the open interest is 27.6%. So not pretty huge. So most likely now, this usually should be our signal because now these are the speculators who are literally, they buying. So when the hedgers are selling, then they are buying because then they need to make money quick, every day, every day. So I think that's okay for sentiment. So what else do I need to show you? So apart from the CFT, there's also other currencies you can read. You can see we have Japanese yen futures and, and so forth and so forth. But the most important thing I need you to know, always know how many guys are long and short, especially non-commercial and commercial. And then the most other important is how many people have not taken any position, the percent of open interest for each category. So that way you're able to know the big reversals happen. So let's finish with our, with our, with our notes. At least I've shown you how to do the COT. Sorry, sorry. Uh, one minute. Sorry, oh, where are we? Oh, here. So let's finalize. Uh, how do you create, how to create your own COT trading indicator? 
So I've shown you how to read net long, net short, open interest. I've also shown you timing charts one from one month up to a year. So using the COT report can be quite useful as a tool for spotting potential reversals. So most of these reversals, me, I always know them. So you need to understand market sentiment. So how do you create your own sentiment? So there's one problem though, we cannot simply look at the absolute figures uh, printed on the COT. It looks like I will shot myself by myself 10,000 and so forth. So let's see how you use it. What may have been an extreme level five years ago may no longer be extreme this year. So the reason why I'm showing you is because these things keep changing. Oh shit. This time. Sorry. So let's continue. Oh, here we are. So how to create an index that measures market extreme. Decide how long a period we want to cover. The more values we put into the index, the less, the less extreme. Calculate the difference between position of large speculators and community. That's what I've exactly I've done on the pound. Calculate how many people are doing let long and not shorts on large speculators and commercial traders for each week. The difference net long, net position of large speculators minus net position of commercials. Take note that if large speculators are extremely long, this would imply that commercial traders are extremely short. This would result into a positive figure. So exactly that is how you create your own report. So you look at the large speculators, if they're extremely long, you minus. And of course, if the large speculators are extremely long and so like now our cable now is very very it has confirmed now because our large speculators are long and our commercial traders are short so when we minus we are we are getting a positive figure so on the other hand if large speculators are extremely short that would mean that commercial traders are most likely most likely extremely long this would result in a negative figure so i think you just do the minus, rank this result in ascending order from most negative to most positive. Assign a value of 100 to the largest number and zero to the smallest. And now we have a COT indicator. So I think that one is okay. This is very similar to RSI stochastic that we have discussed. So once we have assigned the values, we should be altered whenever new data is inputted, it shows zero to 100. So this would indicate the difference between positions of the two groups is the largest and that a reversal may be imminent. Remember, we are interested in knowing whether the trend is going to continue or if it is going to end. If the COT reveals that the markets are extreme levels, it would help pinpoint those tops and bottoms. So what we are doing with COT, we are basically being able to see our tops and bottoms. So you can download the COT indicator you are trading on MT4 and you can also find the link. So these ones you can be able to check later because of time, at least I've been able to show you. We also have a COT indicator that shows you net long and net short positions, which we'll be discussing later. So I think that is how it's equated, percentage of contracts. Yeah, I think we are good to go. So for today, I think you have learned something very, very important, commitment of traders report. You have been able to see how to calculate. So this is just an example. So let me do the summary on market sentiment, and then we are done. Hmm. Yeah, so I think uh, that's all for today. Thank you guys. So I'll be looking to see how you're trading now and your strategy and also to see if you're faring well also with the classes. So for market sentiment,